Module 3, Lesson 3, the Matplotli Package. So, let us first understand what is the Matplotli Package. The Matplotli Package is a Python library that is used for data visualization. This package helps you to create bar plots, scatter plots, histogram, and a lot more of data visualization. This package is very crucial since it helps you understand underlying relationship between the attributes in the data that you have and also the defining relationship between your sample and the overall population. Generally, the Matplotty package very, very crucial information which you cannot just see with the data. And so it becomes very, very, very important to understand how this package works. So let us dive in and start working with the Matplotly package. So the first thing you need to do before going even further, you need to import the Matplotly package and let me just say something before we continue. The very specific functionality that we use in Matplotlib to draw this graph is known as the pie plot. So in order to import this pie plot functionality to use it in your data, you just write from, it is in Matplotlib, Matplotlib, like that, import import pie plot and in this case I'll give it an alias as PLT as simple as that so the first thing I want us to learn how to plot is a line graph line graph line graph so we need the X values and the Y values and in this case the X values are just a value like between a range let us say 1 to 10 and in this case I'm going to use a value of 1 to 10 and the way you can get this value is so easy. As you remember using our arrange function in NumPy, you can just say np.arrange and then you can place the values inside here 1 to 11 and it will give us a value of 1 to 10 stored in X. Let me just print X down here so that you can see. If I print X down here, you can see it has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 10. So in order to get the corresponding values of Y, I'll just do something like this y is equals to 3 times x and so what this does is that we'll take all the values of x and multiply them by 3 and store them in y and so if I print these values down here you can actually see that y is 3 that is 3 times 1 then 3 times 2 6 and so up to 30 and so after we have gotten these values now let us get into drawing the line graph. The first thing I need to do is just write plt dot and then I call a function by the name plot. Inside here I will pass the x and the y value which is x comma y and then the next thing I just say plt dot show to show the line graph. And so if I run this code you will see that down here we have our line graph as simple as that but now there are so many functionalities that we can perform with this line graph as you can see it doesn't give that much information since it doesn't have an x label and a y label and so the way we can do this we can just write plt dot x label in this case i'll just say x axis and then plt dot y label and in this case I'll just say y axis like so and if again if I run my code you can see now we have the y axis and the x axis the next thing I can do I can add a title here and now I can say plt dot title like so then I can just say line graph and so if I run my code you see now we have a title line graph and some of the cooler things you can do with this is that you can actually change the color of this line let us say you want it to be red I come now to this function plt.plot and then I'll just say color then I'll put an equal sign like so and then my quotation marks then I'll say green if I run this code now, you'll see that now the color 
of this line has turned to to green and so if i want let us say to maybe change the width of this line i can just say line line width equals to let us say maybe done if i run this code you can see the line width has become more thicker as compared to the first and so let me get it back to two this looks very bad so if i run two it brings again a thinner line the next thing i can do here is i can change the style of this line let us say you want it to be dotted the thing i can do i can just write here line style then i'll put an equal sign and then what i will do i'll put a full column like so then if i run my code uh, this should be in quotes if i run my code you see now my line has become a dotted line that is the way you can change the line and one last thing before we continue is that let us say i want to add grids in this graph of mine it is a good practice that you, when you draw a graph you should have grids that will help you to understand the data and the way you do it you just say plt dot grid or so and then inside this function you just say true and so if i run this code this should be grid and so if i run this code you'll see that now this graph of mine has grids these boxes in this graph and that is the way you draw a line plot and manipulate different functionality in it now the next thing that i want us to consider is how to draw a bar graph let me just add a comment here as we follow along this will be bar graph so in order to draw a bar graph we need labels for the x-axis which are usually categorical labels such as let us say the months in the x-axis and we have the corresponding values for these months in the y-axis so in this case i'm going to use only four months in order to show you how to draw this bar graph and so apart from that i'll be storing this data in a dictionary to make our life easy so let us create our dictionary let us call it bar graph bar graph underscore information it will be equal to this will be a dictionary with the curly braces and so it will have in january which is the key january maybe this guy got 150 dollars then we have february this guy maybe got 200 dollars then we have march maybe got 400 dollars and lastly april maybe got 500 dollars and so what we want to extract from this information is that we want at the x axis we want to have the names of the month and at the y axis we want to have these corresponding values of this month so as you can remember we can obtain this information so easily using the dot keys and the dot values method in this dictionary so let me just print the dictionary right down here before we continue to make sure that it has been created well so if i print it down here you can actually see that it prints the dictionary with their corresponding value and so if i say something like this months let us just extract the months and we'll do this using this guy here dot keys as simple as that and if i print months down here you can actually see it extracts the months that have the corresponding values in this dictionary and let me also create let's say salary should be equal to our guy here dot values like so and if i run this code you can see that the actual values or rather the corresponding values to this month are 150 200 400 500 so the next thing is now let us see how we can plot these values on a bar graph just the same way 
we drew the line graph, we are going to use the PLT dot. But now, instead of calling the plot function, we just say PLT dot bar like so. And then we'll pass, we have the months. And then we have the corresponding salary. And if I come down here and say PLT dot show, interestingly, you can see that we have plotted the graph down here and you can see on the month of January we have this is 150 February 200 March 400 and lastly April it is 500 the same functionality that you can perform on a line graph you can do the same thing here so let us add the color in this case let us add the color I just say color equals to let us put green. Green is a wonderful nature color. So if I run this, see some beautiful color here, green. And again, I can do like this. I can add plt dot x label. Let us add our label here. Let us say now months and y label. I'll just do plt dot y label. I just say salary and then the title plt dot title and then I'll pass here I'll just say monthly salary as simple as that and now if I run my code again you can see we have the monthly salary as the title we have this guy this should be in quotes this guy inside here should be in quotes so let me run my code again and you can see now at the y-axis we have this y label which is the salary at the x-axis we have this label which is the month and now again let us add one more thing that we have just learned plt dot grill this should be close to your nature now and now what I can just do here is true and if I run this code you can actually see it has added grids in this graph of mine one thing I want to show you is that also you can draw this bar graph horizontally and the way you can draw it is just add an edge here but before I can show you how you draw this is that once you add this edge with our code here it will print an error and I will show you why so if I run this code you see it prints an error here and it has many things down here and the reason why it prints an error is because in order to draw up here these dict keys dictionary keys and these dictionary values has to be a list and so the only thing you are now required to do is type here list in brackets a rounded bracket like so and then up here again is type list like so what this does is that it convert this background information dot keys to a list and also converts this background information dot values to a list as such I will also recommend that when you're working with graphs it will be a good practice for you to convert these keys and these values to a list and so let us try again to run our code now if i run my code you can see now it has drawn horizontal bar graph and that is basically how you can work with bar graphs in data science now let us see how to draw a scatter graph let me just add a comment here and say scatter graph and so as you know scatter graph contains random values so I'm not going to pass here values that follow a certain order I'm just going to pass random values such as let us say 1 5 4 6 8 and 9 and then the y values also I'll pass here in this case they will be I just pass random value 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 5, 8, 9. 
these values have to be the same they have to be corresponding the only thing you are now re required to do here is write plt dot scatter and then you pass your x and y value inside this guy then you are going to just do plt dot show as simple as that And so if I run this code, you can actually see that our scatter graph is drawn down here. So it looked pretty bad. Let me just add a couple of things very fast because you're already fully aware of what is happening now. Let me also add a title. This should be now really easy for you to understand. This is pretty easy, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So just go ahead and do this very easy. And so after adding these guys, let me just run our code again. So if I run my code now, you can see these points are displayed in these grids, which is kind of really interesting. It has a title, X label and Y label. One more thing that you can do with this scatter graph is that you can draw more than one scatter graph on this same graph and the way you can do it let me just add corresponding values of y in this case y1 is equals to 475378 and this y1 correspond to this same x and so if i come down here the only thing i'm required now to do is copy paste this guy and paste this guy down here and now instead of y i'll just put y1 and let me just put a color to distinguish these two guys and let me just put him to be red and so if i run this code you can see actually something very very interesting happening here is that we have now these red labels for this y1 variable if you consider i've just changed the y variable but the x is still the same so you can also change the x and let us say maybe you have corresponding value for x2 that corresponds to x y1 by this you can be able to draw more than one graph on the same scatter plot this can be applied also to the line graph so the next thing i want us to consider is the histogram let me just add a comment here as we go along this should be the histogram and so from here on once we'll be working with real world data and so if you can remember we loaded an iris data set earlier up here just go back to your code up here you can see it is right here we loaded an iris data set dot csv file and so this is the file that i'll be using again so if you have not loaded that file just go and do something like this down here just say pd which is the pandas package then i'll say read read underscore csv then i'll pass the name of my file here in this case it is iris iris underscore data set data set dot csv if you have not loaded this file make sure you do this and it will load into the the project and also make sure you include this file in the same folder as your project and since we already loaded this file so i'll not go over this again let me just print the head of this file so that we can see if we still have it in our code that should be data set dot head like so and so can see right here it prints this code down here so it means we have our file and ready to use so suppose i want to draw the histogram of let's say, say sepal length uh let me just draw the histogram then i explain what is the use of then of an histogram so i just say iris underscore data set then i just do like this and in this case i want to this guy by the name Sepal Sepal 
length. Now, this guy by the name PLT, pipe load, and the function that I'll be using in this case, it is dot hist, like so. So I'll just copy this guy here, Irish data set sample length, and I just paste him inside here. Let me just add a show function down here, plt dot show, so that we can see what is happening here. So if I run this code, you can now see that plt dot show display this histogram down here. Now you see these distributions down here, these bars here, they are kind of cluttered and the way I can make them to be separated or rather to be well spaced, I add what we call bins. These are called bins, these vertical bars here. So the way I can increase their number so that they are kind of well distributed, I can add what we call bins and let us just put 20. And so you can now see they are a little bit well spread as compared to the first guy. So there are a number of deduction that I can get from this. I can say like for example, here is around 4.8 and I can conclude that there are about 16 species, flower species, whose sample length is about 4.8. So this is basically why you draw histogram in data science is to get an understanding of the sample data that you have. For example, I can also say here that there are about 16 flower species whose sample length is about 6.3. So that is the conclusion I can make from this. Now I can draw for all these other guys down here. So now I can pass for this guy, I'm going to sample with. So this is for the guy sample width down here. The same conclusion can draw you that at this point we have around 25 flower species whose sample width is about 3. And we have about, this is 15 flower species whose sample width is about 2.6 to 2.7. So I can also do this for petal length. Now you can deduct the same inference as you have done above. Also let me add for petal width. So you have the same guys down here. These are the histogram that you can draw from this data. And they just tell you some really wonderful information about your data. They help you to understand if your data, for example, is balanced or is not balanced. We'll be able to go deeper and understand these histograms and how we can draw very valuable information when we'll be working in our real world project. So the next thing I want us to consider is what we call the box plot. Let me just plot this box so that you can be able to understand. And the way you do this, just write iris, this is data set and then dot box plot like that into bracket the first parameter you write column equals to then you write i believe it is sample length then by equals to should be species and so let me just run this code and you will see what happens down here so somehow here it is not seen but this is sample length and so these are the three species that I have in this data set the first one is iris setosa iris vesicala and iris virginica and so as you look here this box plot has some useful information which can help us to understand how this data is distributed in this case we have iris setosa whose distribution in this case lies between this let us say this is around 2 to around 5.8. This is where the distribution of iris setosa lies. And this line right here, this line here is the median for these species. So what you can draw from here is that this, the median for this species iris setosa is 5. 
then if you come here this distribution for iris vesicala lies between this around 4.9 to around 7 and this line here which is the median is around 5.8 and also we have this is iris virginica whose distribution lies between 5.2 to around 7.8 so this gives you kind of a well summarized information that determines or rather help you find the deduction of the distribution of these flowers and now as you can look here we have only looked upon the sepal length the way the sepal length is distributed between these three flowers so one thing you can conclude from this visualization is that iris virginica has a high median as compared to the other two let us again try to categorize these guys by width now instead of sepal length i'll just say sepal width like so and so if i run my code again you can see now here we have something again cool now we have the median for iris setosa is around 3.4 vesicala is around 2.5 and virginica is around 3 and again you can do the same for those two other guys that is the petal length and the petal width before you continue now as you see this is not very cool and again it is not visually attractive when working with data and again it looks so cluttered these things here and so there is a more really cool way on how you can approach this drawing of this box plot and the first thing you need to do to import a library by the name Seaborn so you go like import Seaborn as SNS as simple as that then you come down here and you say cns dot box plot and now it takes two value that is the x variable and the y variable and in this case the x variable as you consider it we need the name of the species so it will be iris underscore data set and inside here we shall have the species and then it also take a y variable in this case the y variable will be the sepal length iris underscore data set this is sepal length as so as simple as that and so if you run this code now you'll see now there are some beautiful beautiful plot as compared to these old and rugged up here this down here is kind of really attractive and easy to understand as compared to the one on top here and now you can also see it has colors the only difference is that now this is more visually well represented as the one on top here so that is the way you can draw box plot which are more appealing to the eyes compared to the to this other guy you can do also for the other guys that will be good for your homework before we continue so our last visualization tool that we're going to look at is the pie chart and before you work with the pie chart you need a list of labels that have corresponding values so let us assume that in your house you have a number of fruits let's just say fruits and you put this in a list uh, let us say the first fruit that you have is an apple or rather apples maybe you have mangoes maybe you have oranges and maybe you have lastly bananas so the next thing is that maybe you have the amount of this apple let us just say the amount equals to maybe the apples you have 70 of them the mangoes maybe you have 50 of them the oranges let us say maybe you have 20 and lastly the bananas you have let us say maybe 60 and so how can you represent this information in a pie chart so using our guy plt dot pi now the first guy you pass here is the cost at the amount rather and the second guy here you just type labels equals to and in this case it will be the labels for fruits 
and then down here let us use our guy plt dot show as simple as that if we run our code you can actually see that we have our pie chart down here with the fruit which is occupying the largest space being the apples and now let us suppose that I want to add the exact percentage of these numbers to this pie chart. So there is a third label which is known as auto PCT, auto PCT, and now I'll just say equals to double quotes. Then I'll say zero point rather percentage, then zero point two F, then percentage percentage. What this means is convert this data here, this numerical values here and put them in a two decimal place format and then place them in this chart right inside here you just write auto pct percentage 0.2 f percentage percentage and now again if i run my code you see that now this percentage have been added to our chart down here having apple which is the greatest of all having 35.00 by the way, apple is good for cleansing your body. And we have bananas here, which is also good for your stomach. We have oranges, which is very, very good to increase your vitamins. And mangoes, ah, I love this. This guy is so sweet. And so, this is how you can add the percentage in this chart down here. And one more thing before we wrap up is that let us say you want to increase the size of, of this chart down here. The only thing you're required to do is write plt dot figure as simple as that into bracket and inside here you write fig size. Then you are curved the brackets again. Then let us say I put 10 comma 10. And if I run my code now, this should be fig size equals to 10 comma 10. And so if I run my code now, you see our chart has become bigger and bigger and bigger wow this is a beautiful beautiful pie chart so guys this brings us to the end of this lesson i hope you have learned a lot now you're good to go to the next module where we'll be working with real world data and we'll be working on a real world project congratulations for completing this lesson